Hi, this is Rahul Roy, an Indian uh, uh, filmmaker and screenwriter. And today I'll be hosting this session on women filmmakers on behalf of Hummingbird Film Festival. So they are, uh, this is their debutant year. They are uh, starting off with uh, having a screening back to back from 19th to 21st at Jadupur uh, University. So after COVID, this is going to be a, a, a really, re such a relief to have a live film festival in the city. And uh, today I'll be talking with uh, Trimala, Noran and Preeti, three very beautiful ladies. And uh, I first I'd like to thank all of all of them to take out for taking out time out of their bustling schedule and make time for this session. So I think I'll I'll go first uh, with uh, Noren. Uh, so as uh, Julia won Palmetto for Titan and also Tangi for all the crows in the world. Also last year, Chloe Zhao won the Best Film Academy Awards. Even Sundance celebrated women filmmakers by selecting almost every film from a film filmmaker. Uh, do you think it addresses or compensates the years of unnecessary subjugation? Here, I would add this question with uh, the fact that Ali Asghari actually posted something on Facebook saying, now when it's an all-male lineup after maybe next year or some other year, uh, don't feel bad. Uh, what, what is your take on this? Um, well, I don't know globally how, how is it uh, going, but I know uh, that it's it's not always easy for an uh, Egyptian, sorry, for, for a woman filmmaker uh, in Egypt to be uh, doing, uh, doing her own film, especially when she is the, the creator, especially when mm. she is the writer and director. Mm. Uh, it's, it's always um, um, a hard situation. Uh, because in, in this case, she she's the, the owner of the project. She is the main uh, mind uh, moving. And it's it's not that easy to have uh, a woman uh, making this. Uh, so, yeah, um, having having if, if it is in, in independent cinema, so uh, it only goes with the funds, things might go well. But if I'm going to producers and uh, production companies uh, in Egypt to try to do this, no, it's, it's never that easy. Never. So I understand that uh, not always, it's, it's not always easy for, uh, for women to be, to be making movies. Mm -hmm. But honestly, um, many times I see opportunities uh, for women only. So my, 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 uh, my male uh, uh, colleagues and uh, filmmakers, they say you always have uh, women festivals and, uh, and opportunities for only women. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm not even sure I'm with this or against this because this makes me feel like someone with a problem. So we have to make, oh, uh, poor women, uh, they, they need to make movies, uh, let's help them. So let's make just a, a woman film festival. I see that cinema should be for, for everyone. So my next question will be to Trimala. Uh, so while we're shooting our last film, you told me uh, that you feel more connected to the narratives of women filmmakers. Uh, they understand the emotions better, as you said. So I, I kind of feel the same, uh, though, but, but what were your reasons uh, to, say, to say so? Uh, I think I've worked with like some three, four female directors. I think the way they see emotions, uh, I'm not saying men don't feel emotions, but uh, the way they see emotions and the way they understand it is very different from uh, men. And um, I, I feel a little more safer when I'm working with women director. It's not like when you're working with a male director, there is like some uh, something happening on set, but you connect more, you can discuss more, uh, you can talk about emotions. So uh, that's why, I, I mean, I like working with women directors more, like by 80% more. So I don't know, emotionally, emotion wise and a lot of things, you know, you can talk about, you can like really uh, discuss, which uh, with men, sometimes they fall short of words when it comes to emotions. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So whenever you, maybe someone comes with a script and uh, for example, you, they ask you to produce it. So if it's a male filmmaker and also a female filmmaker, would you like uh, give a preference to the woman, like the female filmmaker? In, of course, I mean, of course. 
irrespective even if the male director has won an oscar i will give it to the female director because we we need equality a uh, lot of bias happens towards women not just film directors actors junior artists character artists who ever like we have uh, there's a hierarchy which we have uh, kind of made in the industry but there should be no hierarchy but female in the sense who work on set dop like especially female uh, uh, cinematographers they should be given more opportunities they're like are they Uh, she won't be able to lift the camera. Look at her. Oh man, she's strong. You know, uh, we 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 are mothers. Oh, we can bear a child That's for nine cool. months. What are you talking about? Heaviness of the camera. You know, we know the pain of periods. So you like so all that. I would uh, say that I I just love working with female directors, actors. So anytime, all my money would go to them if I at some point can produce or I have the money. Definitely. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So for Creepy, I have a question: Is that what is his obsession with classical beauty in Bollywood? <laughs> Hi, Jamala. <laughs> Hi, Preeti. That's a good question you've asked. <laughs> okay. Uh, can you specify? It? I mean, I'm not a representative of Bollywood by in any way, shape, or form. so i can't answer on behalf of bollywood so so if you clarify like I'm, the question I'm is that you're saying bollywood but i mean in indian films i'm not talking about many many of the films are there where maybe the classical beauties are not as uh, represented or celebrated the way it is in the mainstream business but in hindi films we get to see a lot of classically beautiful women uh, as the lead character And you know, but isn't uh, that true example, even in Hollywood? Maybe, but there also. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I made my may I take names. I mean, for example, Aishwarya Rai Bachchan didn't stand a chance. If only acting is concerned. Oh, I understand. Doesn't stand a chance. I mean, uh, and right. as an actor, but she gets to get all, do all these brilliant films with all sure. these. Sure. No, I understand. Actors. I understand. So you want my comment on it? Like, what's the question? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I want your comment on my <laughs> unfiltered. Okay. <laughs> um. Well, I think about this a lot, and I don't think it's about. Uh, I don't think it's about beauty so much that I would, uh, because my first of all, like the minute you say classical beauty, like I think beauty is such a subjective and it's such a debated thing, and I think for women especially. uh you know we have really suffered like the purpose of a woman has been to be beautiful since i think first ad right like we 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 have had no other purpose you know the it's like you have to be beautiful to the man who then owns you you know so when you use a word like beauty it just it is such a loaded thing if you ask a woman you know like because um and from the time like i see little girls um you know like i i know that uh, like i belong to a very uh, middle class like very patriarchal sort of uh, in spite of having very strong women in my family they are all very patriarchal right like and i remember even as a little girl uh, i was just you know you should put this on your face and somebody nice will marry you you know like there was this always that thing so i think the beauty is like so much bigger than whatever but when you when you say so how i understand first of all i disagree um because i think our idea of beauty is so um okay i'm going to say something controversial but i i think popularly uh we are obsessed with fair skin and light eyes so what is actually classical beauty in our south asian origins we don't respect it and we are um you know and i feel i personally have faced more racism in north delhi uh north india than i have faced in new york or anywhere else in the world i haven't right but the colorism that i faced so and for me when i when i read our ancient classical texts like i like you know all these indian heroines from the mythology like i read about draupadi or i read about uh sita and i read about these these women were all brown so when i see like an aishwarya rai or a katrina kaif firstly i feel that they are not classical beauties i think it's our uh, deep insecurity in who we are you know and are just believing that the color white is better you know which is which is so deeply ingrained right 
So that's what I feel. I feel that there are no classical, like, like we don't acknowledge our own beauty and who we are. And the part two, uh, I feel somewhere in the middle, something happened and I don't know when that happened. I don't know the timeline, but I see like, I see movies of um, Bimal Roy, you know, and I, and I see like Shujata and, you know, and I see those beautiful, beautiful films and I see Gurudat and I see like such brilliant cinema and I, I can't <laughs> goose flesh, but it's such, such good cinema, right? And, and then I see the, and they were mainstream films. They were mainstream films that made a lot of money and did really well. And then I see um, movies now, right? Which are just, there is no performance. There is no acting, right? And there is a, uh, and, and I teach acting, right? So it hurts, <laughs> it just bothers me personally because people kind of are like, um, um, you know, like I've been told that your character wears a black mini skirt, like that, that was the character's sketch you know, and uh, that's it. And I was like, does she do anything else? <laughs> you know, except, and they, there's a certain attitude here, which is like, we will, um, you know, um, like they say, acting to hum kara lenge. You know, as if it is like, a, you know, but, but, you know, but if you see anywhere else in the world, um, or even I think in the alternative independent sort of, uh, films in India, you know, people, people respect craft. Um, but I feel that this has been going on for a while where people have forgotten all about craft and people have sort of forgotten about, um, yeah, I think it's, it's very uh, opulent and very visual, but I guess it works for them because those movies uh, I mean, it's a reflection of the audience because those movies are also blockbusters. So those movies do make like 200 crores. So if my aim is to make money, then I'm going to cast like this person who is fulfilling a national fantasy, you know, and and I'm going to put in a lot of bright colors and I'm going to not care about acting because that's not what my audience cares about, right? Then I've made the 300 crore on it. But if I want to create art, then there's a different conversation. So I think, I mean, I don't know. I don't do those films and I don't make those films. So neither do I have any crore at all. But uh, this is what I think they think. But I hope that answers your question. Um, so, uh, my, my question is to Norin. Uh, like when you program for a festival and uh, you get a lot of... Uh, like a lot of submissions from both women and uh, men, male filmmakers. So do you give preference to, uh, I mean, not you, I mean, any uh, organization and such, preference to uh, female filmmakers, uh, irrespective of the craft? Uh, well, not, not all the festivals do that. <clears throat> but recently, uh, since I work in the Cairo International Film Festival, uh, the festival is very keen on uh, giving uh, opportunities for a women filmmaker and is very keen to make sure that the selection in the lineup has uh, female uh, filmmakers uh, in order to um, give better chances. So I think uh, recently there is a positive thing happening uh, regarding this matter. Of course, with, uh, with respecting the quality but the, the, we're just, uh, the, the festival is trying to make sure uh, to select the uh, uh, women in the lineup. And uh, while you direct a film, uh, do you feel more comfortable with like working with women more than with men? Um, no, well, for me, uh, uh, when it comes to the crew, I don't care about gender, I just care about someone who will understand uh, mm -hmm. my idea and feel passionate about it. And of course, uh, someone professional. Um, uh, but I can say that when it comes to writing, I prefer writing with uh, female filmmakers, mm -hmm. but this is because of the topics I talk about. Uh, my topics are, mm -hmm. are always feminine. I always talk about uh, women. I always talk mm -hmm. about, uh, you know, um, 
many things in, very inside uh, the, the woman's structure. So it's not that easy to be understood uh, by, by, by uh, a man to be writing it because I, I need someone to, you know, to, to enter uh, the, the woman world with me. But I, I always see it as a very, very positive thing to have a male vision on this because sometimes when, when I'm so focused about writing the, the female characters, um, I might not write the, the male characters strong enough uh, for the film. So I think the combination is always very important uh, when it comes to creating, but when it comes to the crew, I respect uh, both genders equally. I actually, I, I work in a genderless way. So I just see uh, the artist or I just mm -hmm. see the talent regarding uh, the gender. Uh, sorry, regardless of the gender. <laughs> Can I, can I butt in and just say something? I just want yeah. to say something. I personally feel like um, what, what she said, I feel women just really, like everybody makes a big deal about it, but I can talk, I can say this for myself and I can say this for a lot of women friends that I have, that we really just want to work in a genderless way. We just yes. do not want to be aware that we are women. That's all. But we live in a world where we are constantly being made aware that you're a woman and this is what it comes with. We really, like she said it in such a beautiful way, right? Like, that's my, <laughs> that's my dream. And those are the projects I enjoy where I can just show up to work as a worker. My gender, I, I'm not reminded of my gender because everything in the world is reminding me of my gender, you know? Yeah, so I, so, yeah. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, Fatrimala, uh, my next question is, uh, you, you have, your films have been to, and you also have been to all these major festivals, be it Cannes or Berlin. I mean, how different is your approach to uh, women colleagues or filmmakers compared to any of the uh, Indian film festivals? Uh, I, I don't know, Indian film festival, probably I've just attended Mommy. So, okay. uh, so, yeah, it's kind of equal. I mean, uh, when I attended Pans and Bolin, it was quite equal. I, I don't uh, remember there being told that, uh, because the director of Afternoon Clouds was Pyle. So she was a female director. So, yeah, I mean, like in festivals, I, I didn't see that. Yeah, but it's just that we, as women, we had to get ready a lot, which I had a problem with. Uh, that's my only thing that why do we have to because I saw my male actors they just wore like a say kurta pajama or like a uh, whatever the basic uh, coat and pan and we had to like kind of get ready I was so cold in Berlin that you know wear a jacket then wear a scarf and then you open it and they were like all chilling that was my only problem that they could chill they could wear proper shoes and then you have to wear heels and then the next day I didn't wear also I was like well, I'm gonna wear my shoes if somebody's going to judge me, judge me. I need to enjoy the festival and the place. So I remember uh, doing an uh, interview with Rajin Masand also. So I had just like, um, like a lot of actors, I saw they were wearing short dresses and they were freezing. I said, uh, this much pain I'm not going to take. I was wearing my coat. I was wearing a scarf. I was wearing a cap also. I said, now you ask me whatever. You know, you need to ask about my performance. This, that, I'll answer. But I'm not freezing to look good, to look pretty, and you know, like, oh, thundi, okay. So all that I did, you know, that was the only problem that as women have to get ready a lot. So that's it. Like, why can't we just be ourselves? Whatever we are comfortable with, just let us, let us just be. Like, why do I have to wear a gown and then walk? Why can't I just wear jeans, t-shirt, you know, whatever I'm comfortable with. And then you can ask me about the, whatever, how my experience was. That's not going to change. That's going to be the same. My answer is going to say whatever I wear. So uh, with he, that was just a pain. Otherwise, yeah, mommy and all like, it's all good. It's just that they call the male actors first, which I have a problem. <laughs> like why? <laughs> the, 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 even in the credits, uh, like yeah. mm. I have a problem with that. Like even with the credits, you know, the male actors name first, it would come. Like why not? Or go like attendance wise, how we used to go in school alphabetical wise go like that you know whoever irrespective of whoever the actors or whoever is acted in the film so that little bit here and there but festivals are like 
you you're treated equally like it's there's no problem like the ones i have attended just these two problems i had yeah okay actually this answer <laughs> makes me discard my next question which was like uh, all these <laughs> all these beautiful women get to wear these beautiful dresses and all these men are in black tuxedos like they don't even have choices <laughs> they they are not even given choices to wear something fancy maybe even if they want to so don't you think even this is discrimination is you asking me or i asking priti yeah, yeah anyone can answer i mean anyone can answer uh, actually i i i've seen recently uh, many men uh, going to the red mm-hmm. carpet with the dresses with the special yeah. design tuxedos i think actually they they have uh, the option so if if they want to go basic he can just wear his black tux and and he'll be fine and if he he feel if he wants to go with something special he'll go and have a suit designed and he'll just be fine <laughs> but for a woman she does not have the option she has to have um a new dress for for every event and she cannot appear with the same dress twice or whatever but if the man is wearing the same tux no no nobody will know you know so no i think i think it's not a discrimination from men they have more option maybe the only discrimination is that um, i don't know they they are not allowed to wear makeup for example <laughs> but i think they have the beard and stuff and so this is uh, probably their makeup yeah <laughs> they they can cover up for anything they want yeah so uh my next question uh, is to uh priti actually uh, my question is like you have short film in both new york and mumbai how different is it to make a film or work in a film as a woman there in new york and here in india hmm <laughs> <laughs> i think it's uh You're asking me all these controversial questions now, <laughs> but um, hmm, I'm trying to articulate. I think just um, it's really like I I can't make a generic. I think it's unfair to make a generic sort of a statement because I think it really depends on um, the. I think it really depends on the director and the producer of. that project right like it really does come down to that uh there is a very very active independent film scene in new york which has been there for a while you know so people are more settled in and 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 whatever um also i did a lot more independent work in there you know i've done definitely i, I did four films there so i done more in the work there than here you know here i was doing a lot of mainstream tv and i did um you know some web stuff so uh, and one small one short film two short films i did here but um uh hmm what's the difference i i don't know i think i've met i've met uh there there is a certain professional ethic and there's a certain uh, amount of um people are cool they're cooler you know they're not like new york is just and i think that's also very typically new york like you can it's a city where anybody can be anything so even my friends from europe even from like paris which is such an openly accepting place like you know they have moved to new york because they feel they can be themselves so new york i think is a place which allows people to be whoever they are and and there's a very very liberal mindset so in that and people are and people are careful about um you as a human being you know it's a place where sometimes over sensitive but people are very sensitive about those things and i think that attitude sort of filters in but having said that uh i think it would be unfair for me to say that it doesn't exist in india because all the uh you know whenever i have discussed like film projects like even when you and i were talking you know uh, i was quite uh, impressed with how you think about women and how you want to you know make this thing and what's your attitude so i think i have interacted with the uh, good people but if you ask me like oh uh, yeah uh and i think there's a hmm 
No, I think somebody who's having the courage to make an independent film is already thinking differently. And is not somebody who follows the regular, you know, route. So, and that person has obviously exposed him, himself or herself to world cinema and they have a certain sensibility. You know, the way they see the world is different. So I think it's very similar. It's not, um, not, not something different. Have I answered your question? <laughs> You're on mute. I'm so naive at moderating, I told you. <laughs> but anyway, uh, <laughs> my next question is to Noran. Uh, do you think misinterpretation of feminism is uh, showing us to borderline misentry? You are mute, you are mute. You'll have to unmute yourself. Uh, your voice was breaking. Can you say again, please? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, my question is, uh, do you think misinterpretation of feminism is actually maybe shoving us to a borderline misandry? A male hatred, maybe. Uh, borderline what? Uh, borderline Main misandry. Hatred? Yeah. Hmm. Um... I, I don't I, I never thought of it but who, who, male, male hatred from from women you understand you mean not from women I mean in general I mean uh, feminism see feminism is a very divine concept and it has been misinterpreted in so many weird and unfortunate ways I mean me uh, the idea is which we practice now as feminism is maybe not what we like we wished for or we wish for maybe actually I think that we wish for equity or equality amongst men and women but uh, some sort of very weird sense of feminism or giving a certain preference to women and also certain rules and regulations that have been imposed into the society in, in terms of giving precedence to women so do you think that it is unfair to men or also, I mean, generalizing men as an entity or as a form and uh, maybe, I mean, it, it is in say that not all men, not all women, but uh, it is not in really in practice. I mean, it, it goes same with Islamophobia, you know, like if you see a Muslim guy coming into the flight, irrespective of how he is, the first thing that comes to your mind is, he may be, he can be a terrorist. He can be harmful to me. So don't you think that over practicing the misinterpretation of uh, feminism is actually maybe uh, turning us into, uh, or maybe making it uh, more available for misentry? Um, well, yes and no, but let me, let me for, for a start, uh, I think with time, um, most of us, uh, started having uh, our own definition for feminism. So I don't think when we say feminism, we all mean the, the, the same thing. Mm. So uh, for some people, it means just uh, equality. For other people, the, it means uh, male hatred and, uh, mm. and uh, giving women everything. For, so each one of us starting developing and, and living with another um, definition. So for me, uh, what, what feminism mean or what, what, what I developed um, was, is just equality. Just when, when I come beside a man, don't say, oh, you're a woman, you're not taking this. And, and for me, it works both ways. I don't, I don't want them to say, oh, you're a woman, take this. When I mean, when it comes to professional uh, work. So I just, um, I just want equality. And of course, I agree with you. Is sometimes it is overused to to say to demonize men uh, and uh, and to to just uh, make it general that all men do this and that. Uh, but at the same time, we 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 have the fact that uh, some may uh, men are still doing the same bad, abusive, uh, entitled. Uh, behaviors that makes women uh, do this. So you still have the producer who, who is entitled to ask uh, 
uh, in an uh, improper way or to treat uh, the female filmmaker that she is uh, less than him or no, you cannot uh, be a partner. You just mm -hmm. work uh, according to our vision. Or of course, the, the big problem of the uh, harassment that happens all the time. So that's why I'm telling you yes and no. Of course, I'm not with uh, demonizing all the men because it's it's not, it's unfair. It's so unfair. There is there are many decent men and many decent filmmakers that I I respect and I love to work with and I I do appreciate their 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 efforts and work and it's it's so unfair for them to be um, uh, accused all the time along with. Uh, others but it's it's also so unfair to say oh okay let's just stop accusing all men so the entitled um you know bad guys mm. will, will will do more of the bad things so it's kind of a dilemma i i, I don't know how to stop it but we, we have to start just um, taking uh, things in an in a, in a more individual way and i think um there was a big problem at, at some time that women uh, were not. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why, but we were not trained to speak. We were not mm. trained to complain. We, were, we 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 couldn't really. We didn't know how to say uh, no in the right time. I, I don't know wh wh why is that, but many women had a, a delay problem. So she is in a position where she's being abused, and they're not saying abused. It, it, it does not have to be a, a big abuse or a sexual abuse. No, just in uh, treated in a disrespectful way or didn't, uh, you know, just didn't take her, 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 her position in, in, a, in a nice way. And, and we just, we didn't speak. So, so what happened is that we kept silent, 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 silent. And, and now we're kind of panicking that whenever anything happened, we feel, oh, okay, should I speak? Should I not speak? So it is, I think it's confusing for women, for men and women. We don't know when to speak and when not. And men are, are, are kind of, uh, so I, I have a, a friend who is a filmmaker and he told me that now he is afraid to talk uh, to women uh, in the industry because he's even afraid to make a joke because someone will say that he's a harasser or he's uh, he's uh, he's abusing her so it is really confusing for both i hope it ends but i don't know how you're on mute again you're on mute yeah but you have explained it so beautifully can i please um, add to it i want to after, yeah. after, after pretty i'll add yeah I think this yeah, is a very, do. I think this question should be open for discussion. I think all women <laughs> feel so strongly yeah. about it. Um, so firstly, thank you for explaining. No, Noran, right? That's how you pronounce your name, Noran? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Noran. Thank you. Um, I mean, the minute you ask this, something visceral happened. You know, um, and I agree, like feminism is a different thing for everybody, you know, but... Um, I think about this, uh, I mean, I, I think all women do. And sometimes uh, they don't even know that they're allowed to think about it till they're told that they're allowed to think about it. And then they think that there's a different way to think. So <clears throat> I feel that change of any kind, like the systems that we are used to, are uh, so archaic and abusive and patriarchal and, and leaning towards men. And they have been that. And I feel a few of your questions have been that, right? Like just because it's been like this for 3000 years, does one festival make it okay? Or just, you know, and I think, uh, and it's not, I was watching somebody on the Daily Show. It's, and it is so subconscious and it is so deeply rooted. Like I have so many conversations where, you know, a lot of my friends are like very progressive, you know, sort of filmmakers and, and I, and I, and I, Sometimes I say something and, and they get personally affronted and they're like, no, but I don't think like this. And they don't even realize how many patriarchal habits they have. And I'm so sick and tired of men thinking and assuming how women think. Like there are so many times when I read a script which is written by a man about a woman and it's just wrong. Women do not think like that. 
Women don't like and pink. And Just to that. All women you know, don't like pink. Yeah. And and suddenly and I and very honestly I think that if if uh, no I have two things to say okay so i feel that when something has been uh, and and i was personally like asked to direct like for example a play you know in new york and the script was written and very liberal and very you know sort of woke and very very people who want to make a change but i'm hearing and I'm, i'm reading the dialogue then i'm like this is not how a woman will ever talk to another this is not how we talk this is how men think women talk like you have no idea and you have no idea because you haven't considered it important because we are so used to for however many years accepting one way of thinking and one way of being and i don't think and i think when it has been like that lopsided like there are things that i think and i know women think all over the world that a man has never thought of really you don't know that visceral thing I step out of my house alone on a street, whether it's New York, whether it's Tuscany, whether it's Bombay. I have a fear of being raped. It is in my bones. No friend of mine who's a man ever feels that. It's it's such a visceral thing in our body, right? So if there are like three guys, on, like if if somebody is making like a general every time, <clears throat> and there are incidents of men getting abused also, but I'm just saying. that that just statistically the percentages are so lopsided you know it is it is so 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 lopsided and i feel when there has been so much oppression for so long you know when there starts being a change the change sometimes is explosive and the change is 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 violent in in a sense you know even emotionally and sometimes it needs to be that because the degree of oppression and the weight of it has been that much and i think we must like you know like a tornado or a tsunami sometimes we need to allow allow for that of course keep our wits about you know of course uh, not become the very thing that we are opposing you know like i feel sometimes when we are opposing something ideologically we also become as harsh uh, as exactly what we are opposing so one must take care of that but i also think that um You know, I think it's time that men grew up and they learned a few things about women. I really think so, and I think it's about time they did that. And and just uh, and just thinking that women have equal rights—that's not the beginning and end of it, right? I think there's a lot of history and there's a lot of suffering and a lot of pain and a lot of like stuff which has gone in and and it like you know like when we talk about the suffering of black people right like just giving an equity today does not solve an endemic systemic problem which has been going on and on and on for years and uh, you know which is why they say the white fragility so i do think it's male fragility like you know it's very hard for um somebody who's liberal uh, to understand what do they have to do beyond being equitable with somebody you know who has suffered uh, you, you know racially for so long i think it's the same way in gender discrimination you know so just being sensitive to a woman you are with today is not the end of like a cycle of systemic abuse which has gone on for 4000 years and that has to be understood and that rage has to be understood you know and and it has to be honored that's what i feel <laughs> so i got um, so passionate okay. about this um it is beautifully spoken beautifully spoken beautifully spoken but you must say that yeah. you, you you have to add something please do. i think priti said it really yeah priti said it really well but you know my i probably my answer is a little out of context and nothing to do with films you know i was one day uh, like uh, during diwali i was at uh, uh, now my in laws house and i was just thinking and i was like why why are men like this why are they you know think so strongly and you know how do they just just say anything and i was sitting at his house and i was like i was observing his uh, dadi or grand or grandmother or uh, nani and you know I, and the one thing they said you know our son is a diamond and that's the point i lost it i'm like this is the problem you know when they said you're so lucky to get married to him i said he's equally lucky to get married to you know i have a problem with that you know that the uh, the uncles or the brothers or the fathers or he himself is not seeing this it's the mothers 
it's the grandmothers and i got so irritated and they're like you know now two years of like you planning a baby why don't you leave a uh, quit work like why can't he quit work and sit at home and i need to work you know so my my problem all the time was like this actually is the problem sometimes uh, men also don't think so much it's the it's the mothers it's the grand uh, grandmothers or probably their nannies dadis and then you know asking me oh you're three sisters right i'm like yeah we're three sisters bhai ne we full take care of your parents and my answer to that you know what first i we three will take care of our parents as you are taking care of your parents right now because you are also two sisters taking care of your parents what makes you think i we will not take care of our parents you know this thing that if there is a boy at home he will only take care of the parents he is a diamond he is allowed to do anything if i smoke if i drink you know they have a prop like you know there are immense amount of problems a girl should there are so many things we are told not to do that i have a problem is being told by the mothers and the grandmothers that is is like the biggest problem and i if i come back again whenever i go back i'm going to change this you know you shouldn't i did this this time i this time i said a lot of things i took a stand i'm like no this is not right this is just not right i'm i'm not like this you you cannot tell me what to do when you don't tell your sons what to do you don't tell me what to do you know in a very nice way yeah. of course not like holding a sword and fighting with them but no, no, no. to so this is actually my problem that the moment i thought like if i become a mother in law or i become a grandmother i'm not going to do this somewhere the chain needs to break you know we need to break the chain so yeah this was probably out of context not to do with films but i thought i wanted to share it i don't know why but i just said it yeah, yeah. maybe that was my my act- kind of <laughs> this was not at all out of context actually yeah i mean <laughs> for many women i mean uh, patriarchy is so deep rooted in them mm. they have been learned that way they have been trained since their childhood that way they they forget being as what they as men or as what they as someone someone else i mean i mean they even feel so derogatory about themselves no so that no, i guess you know I, i i'll tell you one more thing you know uh, like during the lockdown i was like i have, I have three mother in laws <laughs> <That's> mm. scary <laughs> so the middle mother in law you know she was uh, cooking in the kitchen and you know she kind of i don't know what what you should say but you know she said uh, you know once when i got married the next day i was in the kitchen and look at you you know you're just standing i said you know what i answer I, i gave her an answer and i said when your son was studying at the same time i was also studying so my mother didn't send me to the kitchen i said you need to like you need to really change that thought maybe you could also tell your whatever family like you know i said that to her i said when your son was studying even i was studying so that's why i don't know how to make chapatis it's fine there is no problem with it you know so sometimes you you need to tell them and then they agree with it yeah they're like yeah 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 so all that keeps happening a lot now yeah so i i, I have a comment on uh, on, on both uh, pretty and uh, primala um, what they said um i think the main reason of uh, female suppression are females not males i think we we are the the main uh, uh force that keeps us inside this uh, closed circle telling us what we are allowed to do and what we are not allowed to do especially in places like middle east i think the culture between middle east and india is a bit similar in this in terms of uh, traditions and and uh, and what we are used to so i think for example for Egy- in 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 egypt uh, the first one who will tell you that you are not allowed to do this or you are allowed to do this especially in a marriage or so are women uh, so the mother or the mother in law will, will tell her, her daughter that this is your job this you sh- you are supposed to do this you are supposed to take more of this you are supposed to accept this and and it's always very weird when when a man uh, does something similar so when when he starts helping or or when he for, for example um when when someone is being unfaithful it's always okay for men to be unfaithful and women has to forgive it's 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 just a given and if she, if she didn't do so she would be a bad wife she would be wrecking a home or making a problem but if a man decided to keep his home by accepting that he's 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 never looked to the same he will always be treated as less and from women uh, equal to to men i mean 
women will not accept the fact that a man will 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 accept something like that. So I think uh, be, before asking men to to treat to treat us uh, differently and to understand us and to support us, we need to change uh, what we are doing. I mean, I'm very happy that the new generation are more aware of this. Um, I mean, most of our generation, we are aware of what women are capable of. I mean, for, for, for so many time, we ignored our, our main power and we, we were waiting for the, ma the male approval or the male uh, support to do stuff. But now we, we understand uh, more the power that we have. We, we almost have as equal power as them, but, but we, we just, we, we can't see it. So if, if we are using uh, our power uh, in a very proper way, I think men eventually will, will just follow. Uh, okay, this is how, how, how you, you, you want to be treated. Like for example, men, they do whatever they want and we follow because they, they are very clear, okay, we do one, two, three, we, we do stuff uh, like this and, and that's it. So we just, okay, you do this, so we accept. So I think we, we just, it's, it's time for us to do the same. Okay, guys, we, we, we are just surprised. We're a human being just like you and uh, we have a brain and, and we can do this and this and that. But eventually, <clears throat> I do respect the fact that men and women are different and it is a good thing. But... It, it, it is a good thing, not only in, in men and women, it's, it's a good thing in human beings. Each one mm -hmm. of us can do something. You can excel at doing something and you're not that good at, at doing another thing. And it's only fair to use, to collaborate all the time. And this is, for example, this is filmmaking. I can write, you can uh, shoot and she can act. And okay, guys, let's all get together and do one thing. So this mm -hmm. is like also for for men men and women when they collaborate and so in life marriage or work whatever so they're two human beings that excel in different things so okay let's discover what what we excel at and respect that and then and it should be fine yeah it's a collaboration even if even in real life and in films uh, both way collaboration between men and women. Exactly. Um, on that note, I think I'll have to end this session because we have almost reached to our end. I had another question for Trimala, but I I don't think we have time for that. Uh, but um, anyway, it was such a such a brilliant brilliant uh, session. I mean, all of us. I I learned a lot about uh, how women should be treated in a in a film set and beyond film set as well. <laughs> I mean, what happens in film set, be stamed out of what happens in the film set. So, uh, thank you, Noran, Trimala, Preeti. Thank, thank you. you so much. And one joining. more thing, we women want to be paid equally as men also when we are working. That is the question. <laughs> <laughs> that is the question I have. This is very important, yeah. So, a difference in facial between the lead actors. That yeah, that's a big difference. We, we need to be paid pay us the same. Yes. Pay us the same. Don't pay us extra. Don't pay us less. But pay us the same. Pay us equal. Not yes. less. Yeah, equal. Like if he's getting paid like 5 lakhs, then we want 5 lakhs. Then they pay us 1 lakh. Why 4 lakh difference? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. And we, we do it's more. We wear those short effort. dresses also. We show our bodies as well. <laughs> they don't have anything to show. So we anyway should snowing. be paid extra. <laughs> yeah, and then it's snowing. Yeah. Yes. So we should be paid equal. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Trimala. Thank you, Priti. Thank you, Lauren. It was really, really Thank nice. Thank you so much. You Thank you so much, Rahul, for doing this. This was Thank so you. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you. Yes. Was All the best really for the festival. Thank you so much. Thank you yes. so much. If you, uh, I mean, of course, you, none of our, none of you are in Calcutta, but people who are in Calcutta and watching this can actually visit uh, the other university. The festival is happening there live from 19th to 20th of this, 21st of this uh, month. So go and watch your films, films you like. <laughs> thank you, thank yes. you so much, I'll end. Thank yeah. you.